the one thing I want to say, but I can't. Oh, okay. Just don't forget it. It's about spell jammers. I found out. Oh, really? Yeah. What about spell jammers? One of the playable races. Yeah. It's a plasmoid. Ah! Get the news! Oh, that's right. Oh, I think I was watching like uh, uh, something that was on the D and D's uh, channel one time, and one of them was a plasmoid. Yeah. It was a Bria was playing a pa plasmoid, and she had like type of change. It's kind of cool. Yeah, so the take the take the D and D TikTok when they were talking with the creators and stuff, and they're like, yeah. For the longest time, we just want to write one sentence, and we finally got to do it. You are an ooze. That's fair. Yeah. All right, here we go. Welcome everybody back to Bears and Dragons. We were taking off because I was waiting for my air conditioning to get fixed, but uh, that's like pulling teeth. So. Here we are. I'm suffering. Well, not really. I feel like pulling teeth would be better than getting your AC fixed. Yeah, at this point, yeah, yeah pretty much. It's <laughs> probably the case. Three weeks. <laughs> so, welcome back to Bears and Dragons, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons. Careful with that lifting of your arms. No. Yeah, sorry, it's just it's just auditory, it's just reflex. Just, yeah, I'm just yeah. talking about like here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nothing showed. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have the camera high enough, so I literally have to stand up before they show. All right, and, and uh, also the uh, likelihood that a mod, mod's gonna come over here and, and, and catch us. So I would like to point them towards a certain uh, pers other person, people's Twitch streams where I see titties all the time. Yeah, anyway, uh -oh. on. Hey, we're just trying to follow the rules. So I understand. Anyway. Besides the point. Alright, so previously on Bears and Dragons, do you guys even remember what happened? Where were we? We just... We... Um, where we're going. I think we just got outside of Blindenstone at the end of last session. It was a short set session. It was like less than two hours. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, two hours and uh, apparently there were sixty minutes for that. Somehow didn't get into the cut. I don't know what happened there. Notice it kind of started in the middle of the session. But yeah, but at the end we had just gotten like outside of Blinden Stone and level nine. Kind of start talking about what we're gonna do since kind of Blinden Stone is where people are gonna start splitting off, going to the surface. Everyone's going to the surface except me. So. And, and probably one of the most important parts of this. You lost stool. You no longer have stool. Stool left to be with his people. But you're going to the place with Jim Jaw. It's, this is my people. Hey guys, ready? We got the careful out here. We got a few mines. Uh, we're not like the explosive sort of things, but like places where people mine stuff. Uh, some of them are kind of hidden. I'm not sure if you'll you'll notice that he he starts like jaunting down one in the caverns. Did he say hitting? Hitting? Oh. I thought you said, uh, uh, like, mines sometimes just start hitting you. I don't know. That's why I heard. <laughs> Your follow. hearing's not so great. In any case, uh, so he's he starts trying to, or uh, heading down one of the caverns, leading everybody towards uh, what's essentially the outskirts of the Blingdenstone Domain. Uh, what does, uh, the, like, entrance look like? It looks like a cave right now. 
So you're not actually at Bling and Stone. You're kind of like uh, in what would be considered like uh, like the suburbs, except without any habitats or anything. So you're in the the uh, area of Bling and Stone. You're not actually to Bling and Stone proper. But Jinjar seems to know the way. From this Bling and Stone, correct? Yes. So what can you tell us about this place, Jimjar? Uh, Blinged in Stone, uh, well... Oh, okay. So, to be honest, uh, Blinged in Stone's not, like, the best as what it would be. Like, right now, we're really in a rebuilding effort. Uh, it's... Well, let's just say there was a big attack. We had to run... Uh, and people have been coming down to reclaim the city. So we've got a um, few people that have been kind of heading up the operation. Get the... Is it the drill that attacked? Let me actually see if I've got the full story here. Yeah, so, uh, long story. Uh, if you want to hear it. Uh, but in short, uh, due to trying to uh, uh, get together with the, the dwarves of Mithril Hall uh, to to be help with the defense of uh, Mithril Hall against an invading force of Drow from Menzo Berzan, um, by helping them out, they ended up, uh, uh, the Drow decided to attack us and uh, take care of it take care of us and kind of laid siege siege to us for a while we were no match for the army thousands of thousands of us were slaughtered and those five of us that didn't escape to mithra hall or the surface were dragged back in chains to menzo barazan But recently, we decided to come and try to reclaim, resettle, rebuild. And, if, and, and right now, memory serves. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, uh, some of the leaders uh, for the mining expeditions, we got. Well, needless to say, we, like we don't really. Normally, we would have like a king and queen that would be like the head of the society, but. We have the leaders of the, we have the leaders of the dig, Digger Maddox. We got Dorbo, who kind of leads mining expeditions. He's the leader of the mining expeditions, and uh, his wife, Senny, uh, who's the leader of the settlers. A few other people. We got, uh, we got Earth Elemental Wranglers. Uh, we did bring some, uh, some priests down. Most of them are, are priests of, of smooth hands. I'm not much of a godly sort myself, but you know, whatever. Smooth yeah. hands? Yeah, Kalantar Duran, smooth hands. Uh, Jim Jar, what, what did you do when you, uh, we're in Blinden Stone. Yeah. Well, it kind of started off kind of being a spy in a scout. Just trying to, to, you know, make sure the place was a little safe. I was doing some scouting when I got captured. You must have been one heck of a scout. 
I captured. I mean, what does that tell you? Things are a little bit weird I, right now. It's it's not your what Blind and Stone used to be. I mean, it was a couple millennia ago when it happened, so it's been a while. Sure, we we were all captured at one point, so yeah, exactly. I was probably drunk, to be fair, but oh, well, my friend, maybe you should do something about that. I mean, drinking. It's a good thing, but you gotta know know when to stop. Uh, one thing, one thing about alcohol is that you don't really need to tell yourself to stop. You just stop when you stop. <laughs> Usually, when you pass out. Exactly, stopping point. It's usually not actually a good thing. Stopping is stopping, them, my man. Yeah, what do you do when you wake up? Just begin again? Seems like a good Friday to me. The cavern seemed to, like, open up a little wider. And actually get more uh, broad in an open area. You do see... Uh, off in the distance uh, what appears to be some sort of metal structure quite a, quite a ways ways away through between slag tight slag mites mites it this seems to be kind of uh, maybe an outskirts of the city does it look like it's being watched or guarded uh, you don't see anything offhand uh, from where you are. Actually, roll me a perception check. Twenty-two. Uh, it's a fair ways away, but you do see you do see um, what looks to be some sort of activity uh, quite a, quite far away. Um, but uh, it's just through kind of like some gaps in between uh, some of these legged mites. There's one second from the ground. Can't quite make bites. out what it is, but it, it is definitely in a direction. Uh, there is a plenty of places where there's obstacles. You can't like walk straight through. There ends up being kind of some walls, but there's like holes, openings, and and everything, but it seems to be much more open, open sort of area. Jim Jar is giving you kind of like a, it feels like he's following some sort of street or almost like you're in a forest, but it's all stone. Once we get into the city, how, how friendly will they be to outsiders? Well, considering our history, they might not be like 100% friendly. They'll probably be a little suspicious, even with me around, uh, which will help. Uh, they won't attack you or anything unless you do something, but they'll probably be on their guard. Uh, they're pretty, we're pretty, su normally pretty suspicious of outsiders. Well, down here, I guess he'd be suspicious of anyone from knocking you under, under dark. Yeah, I mean, we escaped up to to Beldis people, in fact, up in Mithra Hall for some of us. So, I mean, we're, we're familiar with some of them, but if we don't know know you, or if they don't know you, they're going to be a little suspicious on the god. Hey, if you don't attack them, they won't attack you. So be kind, be polite, and everything should be fine. Especially if you're just acquiring about seeing about getting to the surface. We're also here on other business, if I remember correctly. Oh, we have yeah. this package to deliver. I know exactly where we need to take that. That uh, assuming they'll let us in. I mean, even me being gone for such a long time, they might be like, eh, I don't know what happened to you. Probably want to want to be a little bit. Probably be on their guard. Probably want to see give us proof that you know 
not be manipulated or anything. You could have been converted. Hey, maybe. We'll try our I, best to not give you away. Yeah, as far as I can tell, we don't have any pursuit uh, from those people in Velka Velvet. They, I'm pretty sure we got we lost them. Might still be looking somewhere, but uh, I don't think they would. They're gonna find us, so I'm not too concerned about that. Hey, uh, I think our plant path is a little blocked here. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Who's that? Uh, he ends up looking at, in a general direction, and you see uh, what looks to be another Smurf emblem. It he seems because of the the deep domes are very dark and gray. They somewhat blend into the blend into the rock if you're not too close enough. Uh, but you're able to to spot a, a, a deep down. I'm gonna say that because saying Smurf Nebulin is some hard to say. Uh, waving his arms and, and kind of like motions for. Uh, at Jim Jar to to go. Hey, hey, it's one of my people. Come come on, let's go this way. Think we might have run into one of the mines, which might be able to help us get past this impasse. Um, I would like to proceed with caution. Uh, like I'll try to keep up and stuff, but uh, I'm suspicious. All right, sticking to the back or. Or are you going to be in the marching order? I'll, I'll stay next to whoever I'm in, um, with. Most likely Ron. So wherever Ron is. Uh, I don't know. I just want to keep an eye out for anything mm, that give looks me. suspicious. Right. Give me a perception check. Don't be suspicious. Uh-oh. Twelve. You see rock, 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 smirk, uh, deep down, rock, 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 another deep down, uh, very close to the other deep down. You seem to be armed, but they don't have their weapons drawn or anything as you approach. Uh, Jim Jar st starts speaking to uh, him in uh, deep gnome, in gnomish. Anybody speak gnomish? Oh, not me. I forgot gnome was a language. That's a negative. Hmm. I don't speak Gnomish. Oh. Hey, I just realized there's only eight of you. Or, no, nine. Which I also need to realize I need to open Gage's sheet. So, does it look like they're having a friendly conversation? Or. I know we can't understand them, but. Like, body language wise? Uh, yeah, it's. They seem to be having a, a quick conversation. Um,. Of course he does. Okay. He seems to be having a, a very quick conversation. Uh, or at least that's what it seems like. They've been talking for uh, a little bit. Uh, he seems to be pointing back at, at you guys. Guys making some hand motions. Uh, uh, and just kind of like making up 
pointing towards kind of the general directions you were going before you veered off here, but I mean, you didn't have any other place to go anyways. Uh, and he stops and says, oh, uh, hello, um, Jim Jaw tells me that uh, you are looking to head to the surface and you need to get to Blingdon Zone. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. As, as soon as possible. Please. Oh, okay. Excellent. Uh, since Jim Jaw is here, he's, he's spoken for you, said you've, you're, you're good people. Um, we're going to take you through, through the mines here, uh, the salt mines. Uh, known as the White Shell Mine. Mine, and we can actually lead you to the other end. Of a little ways down, you will find the Pickshine Mines, which uh, they might be able to help you actually get into the city if you help escort one of their carts. They uh, are more more mining about more mining of gems and what have you. Uh, but you first need to pass through here. There's no direct route to the other side of this uh, stone wall. And he uh, leads you off and motions into the mine. Oh. Okay. That was easy. Hey, what did I tell you? Uh, be careful. We want to try to get through as quickly as possible. Don't touch anything. Uh, the, uh, the guy in charge of the mine, he's he maybe he has a pretty demanding hand, so we want to get through as quickly as possible. Just just let everybody be. Don't worry about what's happening, okay? Aye, aye, Captain. Slick a plan. All right. So you head into the mine. Uh, you do see this is more of a, a salt mine. Uh, you see see a lot more of of white powder and and. And a whole bunch of different deep mo domes uh, hard at work. Um, work as you pass through through the tunnels. Uh, you do see see one uh, deep dome standing on a platform looking at it. Looking at a map and he looks up and kind of cocks his head. And he says something in, in Gnomish and uh, the guard, who if I gave a name I forgot his name already. Uh, it says, uh, just it gives a, a quick yell, yell, and the the gnome crosses his arm, looks at you kind of suspiciously, and says, and then just kind of like points his head in the direction you were you were actually heading, and, and then yells back something else in gnomish, and they start, and he starts picking up the pace and kind of practically jogging through the mine. Hey, Jim, what are, what are they saying? Oh, that, that that was just the leader. He was wondering what was going on. It, it, he just gave him a, a quick quick explanation, said we were just getting, passing through. Again, if you were touching it, if you touch anything, that guy could get really mad and you don't want to make him mad. <laughs> Fortunately, everybody here is nice hard, hard workers. Workers that produce a lot of salt. They produce a lot, make a lot of money. Money's always a good thing. I'm not much of a hard worker, so. Uh, I guess I'll just take a little glance around us. Just to see what what's everyone's uh, general perception of us is so far. Um, go ahead and make me a perception check. Perception to perception. Uh, not persuasion. You're moving at a pretty quick p pace, but you see that it seems like nobody's... You, despite the fact that you're kind of moving at a quick pace through this mine, there's a crunch of... of the uh, salt scraps on your feet, um, at your feet. Uh, none of the miners seem to be paying you any mind. You seem to be very I whisper to the work. group. Well, it seems like they don't mind us passing through. That's good. Hopefully it stays like that. 
takes about... How about you? What? Go ahead. I was just gonna, like, look over at Karad since he's been quiet. Like, are you, uh, uncomfortable here with, with them? It, it's just odd. What's odd about it? Oh, can I hear this? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, we're just... We're just yeah, talking low. Quiet. Just yeah, talking to ourselves. Everything's new. About it. Oh. Everything's new to me. I'm just absorbing. I guess this is the furthest you've been from home. Yeah. Yeah, it has. Yep. It just goes quiet. <laughs> You should make new friends. You know, get around more. Just looks at Lester. How can I get around more when I'm already away from home? Good talk. And he, uh, <laughs> just walks faster up. The salt debris is kind of filling the cavern. Uh, so you, as you're walking through, uh, you, you feel like it It starts... You know how Anakin Skywalker once said, sand gets into everything. That's basically kind of what you're feeling, but there's salt crystals. Yeah, are guys. We're wearing shoes, right? Yeah, but it, because of the mining, some of the this like salt dust gets into the air, and then it kind of ends up like landing on you, and you've kind of gotten into some of your shoe, getting into shoes, just those little grains of of small pulverized salt. We catch hey. some in our hand and throw it behind us. Do we get good luck? I don't know, maybe. Religion check? Um. Hmm. Might as well. It's probably the closest. So uh, All for bullshit. <laughs> oh. Um, um. God, I can't find the button. Boom. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, from what you're aware of, the at least the Smurf Uplands, the Deep Gnomes, don't really have such superstitious um, beliefs. But if you try to like get a handful of of uh, salt dust and throw it behind you, maybe. Brad, maybe you should. Uh, pick some up and take some for like seasoning for like dinner you know I, I okay you know, like, I, I got plenty of seasoning and stuff already oh this okay. stuff seems pretty un like it's can't, like it hasn't been processed and stuff like it's Salt mixed with dirt. Oh. I thought all salt was the same salt. It has to be cleaned and stuff and purified. Lasser doesn't know anything about, like, seasoning and stuff. You think in the kitchen he's, he sucks at? I, he th does he think salt is spicy? He doesn't. <laughs> I was thinking that, know. and I'm like, no, we're not going to go there. Crad hasn't been using salt in any of his dishes. It's always been other types of hot seasoning. 
All, and no one's complained yet. All uh, all Lasseter knows is salt, pepper, sugar. Thinking and maybe like some green things. Green. Oh, yeah, the green things. Yep. Can't forget the green things. It's why you don't do the cooking. Oh, wait. Hmm? No, wait. Hmm? Have I... been... Have you been what? I might have been ignoring. No, that wrong character. My bad. Okay. Uh, one of my characters had cooking, a cooking skill or something. Is it that Pip learning? No, Pip just sucks. Um, well, that's for Jareth to decide. But <laughs> oh, oh. all right, enough talking about a different campaign. Focus. It was us. So it takes about uh, uh, twenty to thirty minutes, but uh, soon enough you uh, pass out of, uh, or you, the saltiness of the area starts calming down and getting into more solid rock and eventually you reach an, an exit point. Uh, Prince Darendel uh, gives himself a shake and just this cloud of white comes off of him uh, as he shakes off some of the salt crystals. And you can tell, um, you could still, you can also tell that that it wasn't just salt crystals, it was still dirt that was kind of mixed along. It's not nice, bright white. It's quite gray. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, going back to the whole cooking thing. So, he per, he does have pers proficiency with uh, cooking utensils. Uh, he just doesn't have experience with like all that all the seasoning and stuff he cooked for the army guys and stuff so you know they don't really it's salt pepper <laughs> yeah they don't make sure their food tastes good can you eat it good it, it needs it. to be edible <laughs> yeah that's all that's it that explains it. So, as we're walking, is it just more the same uh, deep gnomes just kind of mining and keeping to their business? Yep. I mean, in, in total, it's not like a, a huge legion of deep, deep gnomes. Uh, you would say there's anywhere between uh, 30 to 40 deep gnomes that you've kind of spotted if you, you were counting counting along it, but they seem to be focused on their work. Are they singing? Nope. There's no hi-ho. I hi asked Jinjar if they know any songs. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I mean, uh, here, here it's pretty much like uh, business. Not much on the the pleasure pleasure part of it. He's pretty. Uh, they're pretty much of a, a hard working crew. Uh, the boss really kind of he's firm but fair. Is this a cover for something? No, no, it's just salt mine. He just they just take pride in their work. Yeah, I believe you. All this mining for salt. Who's who's the uh, who do you trade with, or Blindenstone trade with? 
Uh, most of it's taken taken down to uh, mental de- uh, mental Dareth uh, for for trade, uh, both to the the other to other underdog people as well as uh, some visitors from the surface. So there really are people from the surface that come down here. Yeah, not not many, very few and far between. I mean, most of our business is with other on the dark people. I mean, Mental Dareth is pretty much kind of like the neutral trade hub. Anyone? Not to say anybody really, really trusts each other, but uh, they keep it pretty amicable. Anyone noteworthy? Eh, no, not that I can think of them off the top of my head. I've only been there once or twice. I haven't really talked talk to too many people. It was kind of more of a... When I went there, it was more of a get-in, get-out sort of situation. Not much uh, sticking around. So, how much, how much further till we're in a town proper? Uh, it's going to be a few more miles. I think we might... Uh, uh, the picture in mines will probably be our, our next stop along the way. The pick shines uh, pretty much got there. So they're a different type of mine. They're, they've got more of like iron, copper. Uh, you, sometimes we'll get some mithril and adamantine. There's also some crystal caverns. Make sure we get some some gen phones it basically they're kind of like the premiere like we got our salt mine for for just like everyday uh level but uh all the rarer stuff and and more important stuff especially considering we need to make need materials for making weapons and things defend our defend our city especially after the last last time we were here well a millennia ago but the rebuilding efforts going on it's not great, but we may still have some troubles. I haven't been here in a while, so uh, I don't know what the current state of affairs exactly is, but uh, I'm assuming that we got a lot of things that are still the same. I looked at Karad and Lassiter. I said, well, it sounds like, if nothing else, we'll find a lot of uh, gems and such for spell components, perhaps, and other things. Maybe some armor for for Holly, or... We got some stuff we need to sell, and always can use pro- more product. Items. I'm looking forward to getting back to the surface, but we might find some interesting things here while we're here. I doubt it. Did the calculations... Uh, currently in the bag of holding, there is... 2,600 GP worth of items to be sold. I don't think we'll <coughs> find that type of money down here. Maybe not I mean, in one place, but... Yeah, I guess we could. Oh. I don't know the Underdark, so... If not in straight gold, then maybe in trade. That is true as well. Can everybody roll me a D10? Ditton. Hey, I got a ten. All right. On a scale of one to ten, your roll determined how much salt got into your clothes and your hair. So the lower, the better. The lower, the better. So Syra. Does has a little bit of sand, a uh, little bit of grit in her hair. Uh, and, uh, there's some some grime on her on her clothing, but mm, not terrible. Uh, Holly. That was gonna be. Uh, that was Holly, my next question. Holly. She's sea salt now. <laughs> Holly's skin, um, uh, skin and and armor. It seems to 
to have a little bit more salt than than Syra, but her hair is still immaculate. She just kind of like dusts herself off a little. Karad's about the same as as Syra, but Lassiter. Oh, looks like he rolled around in it. Yeah, he's kind of salty. Salty, yeah. I so never walk up to him like you've got a little something on your everywhere and kind of. I know. Whoa. Thank you. She'll kind of do that whole perfume bottle thing at him and press the digitation some of it off. Just. Grad, uh, it just seems to get hotter. I mean, it's it's fine. I'll I'll just do with it. Hey, it gives me something to taste. Prince Darnell. See you walking around, like licking your lips the whole time. Mm. This, this, despite being the furriest of of everybody who passed through here, Prince Darrendel, um apparently might have actually had a lot, but when he did the little shake off uh, thing, it seemed to pretty much get rid of it, and he's got a few things that he's wiping away. He has really dense fur. Gage seems to be very uncomfortable in his armor. Uh, save for all this. God, we're gonna have to find a body of water at some point. Or a shower. Or bath. Uh, Something. Uh, seems to have uh, been totally fine. Ginger this at advantage because he's kind of used to this sort of thing all right he he barely has has anything he, he did it with advantage that's not actually uh 12. okay got a two yeah he got a two so just added excuse me why did it start doing that adding uh the rolls together Oh, in, in this particular case, I just, because I'm just doing a regular, like, just a roll of dice, I just oh. literally just rolled two tens. Yeah. yeah. That's not a advantage roll. Just because of the way I rolled it. Uh, that usually happens when, when you do an advantage roll and you roll the same number on both die. That's where it gets a little lucky. It's like, I don't know which one to keep. Either one is higher. So the guard leaves you uh, as after you exit the mine and then kind of points points into to the direction. The pick shine mine's over that way. Just follow the path. And you do clearly see a path. Are we all the way over there? No. Wait. What? It was me. It was oh. my accident. <laughs> where Jim Jar is. Right. I, I was so confused. Yeah. I'm using Jim Jar. I was, mo I was moving the map around and I, I blipped it. <laughs> yeah. Where Jim Jar is because you, you can't be where Stool it is because Stool's not with you. Well, yeah, but someone clicked like all the way over here yeah. at the same time. I'm like, no, you're not over there. You're way over here. We are way over here. Do you guys want to take a rest or something and kind of clean off? Or oh, yeah, is there is there a body of water anywhere? I think there's probably a, a there might be a, a place where some water has kind of uh, uh, dripped out. Uh, we don't really have much for like lakes or ponds or anything down here, but uh, sometimes water drips down from the ceiling. He looks up at some of the large leg types. Uh, you oh. come around a corner in the path, and you do see uh, a a pool. It's not not very big. It's probably about 20, 30 feet across. Um, and it also looks pretty shallow, but it's uh, a bunch of water. 
Looks like it just kind of pooled up here. I don't suppose there's like a huge bowl looking uh, something over <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to think how could I use uh, create water to make a tub bath or but, eh. tragic uh the, is there enough water that it looks like we could lash around yeah it, it doesn't look like a like puddle it's like 20 30 feet across it looks like it's a couple feet deep i'm getting it uh yeah. washing up right. take take all my clothes wash up uh, rinse off whatever Ron takes her clothes and kind of like shakes them out thank you it was very uncomfortable he folds up your very. clothes and keeps them in his arm keeps your clothes in his arm and kind of does this mischievous grin uh Okay, I'll just continue taking my bath. He's just standing at the side. Staring at you. Darren Dell and, and, and Aldeath are completely turned away. What? Jundar oh. just seems to be, be leaning against a... Uh, uh, it's the leg type. Gage is like. Not looking. Averting his eyes. I see. <laughs> um. I just do one of those, uh. He, he does kind uh, of be like, hmm, probably partially a good idea. So he actually takes some time to take off his armor. So you can say we we're, you're taking a short rest here. It seems pretty safe. Jim is kind of keeping an eye out. You're probably uh, like 100 feet off from, from where you left mine. Does anyone else seem like they're interested in a bath? Nope. All right. I will invite Rod to the water it's me call it a short rest he he, he goes ah, i like this he still has that mischievous grip and he's holding on to your clothes i want to trust that but i don't know what that could be uh insight mm. check sure <sighs> No, no, I want to trust him. I want to trust Ron. Okay, I mean, you yeah, don't have to. It's up to you. And that's what I'll do. So you spend an hour in the, this this shallow pool of water? It's enough yeah, when it's well, like that's... bathtub like, so, so yeah, I mean, you can submerge yourself, but I mean, it's. You quickly hit bottom. I'll do some floating tricks and yada yada. If Rot doesn't join me, then he doesn't join me. He's just Whatever. grinning the entire time. Fuck. Oh, I'm sorry. Insight. I'm inciting. Okay. Sure. This this is just too suspicious. Is bugging you? Yeah. <laughs> Nine. I don't know. Maybe he's just enjoying the view. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll say to him, you, you you're weirding me out, man. Blaster, you look salty, and now you're sounding salty. Uh, what? I, I don't know. I, I I don't need to wash anything off. I'm fine as I am. And... I'm just enjoying the view. Take your time. 
Doesn't seem like anybody else is kind of in a rush, so. Siren, Karad, what are you doing during your short rest? Since I didn't get as much salt in me, I'm just kind of rinsing out my hair and just kind of like loosely running the water through my arms and legs just to kind of just do a little rinse off. Yeah. Ga Gage pretty much has done the same thing. That he's kind of gotten out of his armor to kind of like see if he can brush out salt out and kind of uh, rinsing himself off. Just kind of at the at the edge, just splashing himself. He's staying still relatively modest by keeping his pants on. Pretty much doing the same, cleaning off. Do Genasis have, like, flesh? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. I was thinking that their bodies were made up of whatever element they... I've never actually seen a Genasis they're not. They're not that elemental. Yeah, you have. This is partial elemental. Polly. I mean... No, I mean, um... Me, myself, out of game, have never actually seen a drawing of an elemental. I'm sorry, not elemental, I'm um, Genasi. Gotcha. Except for that one red flame Genasi. Oh, red flame. Um, it was a female fire Genasi. The only one that I know of, but she was red. So I thought maybe her skin was made out of fire or something, but... No. Mm. Just usually the color of the element and usually their hair. Uh, mostly, from my understanding, they're mostly hairless. Uh, except for, like, head hair and maybe, a, like, facial hair if we're, if we're men. Okay. But that's the, that hair's more of the elemental... Method, but I mean, if you ran your fingers through a fire genasi here, you wouldn't get burned. It wouldn't necessarily feel. Give a fuck's given. Ront uh, is kind of like looking at both of you, enjoying the view. Just watching you guys clean off. Flash fight. <laughs> so you take a short rest, you clean off. He's like, all right. Uh, you guys clean? Uh, you guys rinsed off? You know, the salt mines are uh, a little bit messy. Usually the other yeah. mines, well, it's still kind of dusty and dirty. It's uh, uh, not as sharp, you could say. Thanks for the heads up. We won't be going through the big shine mines. We'll be just be going past them. Whichever way is easier. All right. So you get out of your pool. Yep. All right. Um, Ron. I'll uh, ask Ron for my clothes. He goes. What do you mean? And he starts walking off. Ron, this isn't funny. Come on, boy. Ron. In the pool, I also clean off my clothes and stuff, and then just crank up the body heat a little bit and to steam dry them. I'll see like, on my it's, <laughs> it's like in Back to the Future 2. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just hot. My prestigitation air dryer. Get a little frizzy and then shake it out, yeah. Lasso will follow Ron, hold his uh private area and uh hit them bob. Hope for my clothes back. Seeing you, seeing you naked, she'll minor illusion a little 
little pair of shorts on you. Thank you. You walk forward and the the illusion doesn't move. <laughs> Just walk right through. I'm serious. Give me my clothes. After about like 10, 15 feet, and and it, or he gets just out of range. Like, like he wants to see you actually follow while still naked. And if you follow him, move up to him, he's gonna pass you. He's, he's, you're close. I'll get him later. Um, he gives you a wink. I'll, f- I'll follow. So. Yeah, just do a little slow follow as Lasser's trying to get himself dressed well <laughs> while moving. Fortunately, he doesn't have complicated closing, so it's not too bad. Little prick. I'll uh, sneak him to a side and just kiss him or something. He he chuckles because he, he kisses you back and gives you his. So well, that was a perfect prank. Don't hey, do we're it, almost man. to the service. I'm so glad. Just wait until you meet my mates. You were the one who wanted this relationship. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> As you head down the the uh, the path, uh, you see a uh, area where there's about a dozen deep gnomes uh, and uh, several big old boulders uh, around what looks like to be a moderate size size cave entrance. Uh, As you you approach, you see. Uh, a man stepping out with stepping out followed by a a wagon full of what looks to be rocks a actual rocks or like gemstones give me a perception check from where you are you have to be able to tell you're not quite there yet you just see the entrance Uh, you, you can't quite make out what it is, but you do see what looks to be some slight shine of metal. And you do see what looks to be some sort of crystals, possibly gems. In the cart. You kind of poking out the top. Any interest? Well, I guess that means we're getting closer to the town. I don't think he would be that far away with something that valuable. Uh, Ginger, how long? How much longer till we get to uh the shop? Till till. Until the actual city of Blingdenstone? Uh, it, it might be a while. Uh, maybe we could see about hitching a ride with the, these guys in the cart. Oh. Yeah. Hey! We're, we're, we're kind of escorting them right now, aren't we? Yeah. Maybe get a job. Maybe they'll pay, for, pay us a little bit. I mean, yeah. what he's got in that cart is pretty valuable stuff, I'm sure. Probably needs to be refined. But uh, other than that, probably still worth a lot of money. Could probably use some security. It keeps them safe and gets us, uh, at least if not paid, some good reputation here. Can we see whomever this cart belongs to? Yeah, there's a bunch of deep gnomes right there. Oh. When the deep gnomes is where it looks to be in... uh, a little bit of, uh, for lack of a better word, finer attire. Uh, this is probably uh, some sort of the leader. He goes, uh, "Hey, uh, 
Hey, we're heading to Blindenstone. If you're taking that, uh, could you use some help? I could pro we could provide some extra security if you'd like. Uh, the man turns and, and looks towards uh, your party. Yes. Well, where did you come from? Um, oh, uh, we were just, uh, uh, me and my friends here, long story. We got a little, uh, we had a little trouble with the drought. Don't worry, we lost them. Um, and we're just, we're trying to get these, these people to the surface. Kind of looks over the party and be like, I can send, send you, 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 and you. But you, any points to grad. What are you doing with this motley crew? He's our friend. And uh, eyebrow goes up when you say a friend. Yeah. Friend. Have they helped never... me and I helped them in certain situations, kind of doing a vagabond type of thing right now. Yeah, you're trying to go to the surface? I've never heard of a dog. No. Going... no, I'm not going to the surface. I was helping them to get there, but no, the surface is too big. Hmm. Once they get to the surface, or uh, on their way to the surface, I will be going my own way. Where Maybe staying here at Blended Stone. Going back to uh, Grackle Stug or heading off to Mental Dareth? Might be able to find some another Duragar there to take you back home if you are heading back home. Oh, no. I'm not welcome home. No. Let's just say. Uh looking to make a new life, possibly in Blindenstone. I am a good smith and a good cook. You don't necessarily know that you're not welcome back. No, yeah, we might yeah, not we even realize that you're the one that you know They said I was a traitor. Maybe they were showing tough love. They always show that. They that might be their way of <laughs> showing <laughs> they love you. No. Well, we'll have to see about that. I will say this, we don't have much love for Durgar here in Blingdenstone. So I can't guarantee anything, but if you help us out and show you're good. I will uh, do it. I might be able to cut you a break. Alright, we'll see about that. In any case, if you're just looking for passage into Blingdenstone, you can help me out here. You're welcome to, to hang out here. Some of you can ride on the cart. We got a few we got a little space. The material is pretty solid stuff, so don't worry about sitting on it if you if you want to get off your feet for a while. Looks like you've been walking for quite a while. For days. Months, maybe. All right. It's a pretty large cart. It's flat. Uh, uh, it's not, like, super deep or anything, uh, but it is long, about... Uh, 20 feet long, about 10 feet wide. Right, just has a full of just various rocks of many different types. Uh, and again, you can see spot some crystals. All of it seems to be really solid. Uh, so, he, so he says you can ride on it. Uh, there are a few like benches on the on the sides. Sides looks like for people to kind of ride along. They don't have any, like, sort of seatbelts or something, so you probably have to hold on to the side of the, the cart in order to make sure you don't fall off. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you could definitely ride along without having to... to uh, um, walk the entire way. All I ask is that you keep an eye out for any dangers. And if something should attack, I just ask that you take care of it for me, and I appreciate that very much. Uh, I'm going to be staying here, but your driver, uh, Melvin, uh, will be leading the way. Uh, and you, you see him scratch some something down on a piece of paper, and he hands it to, to the driver. There is a seat open next to him. 
Otherwise, you have... You can ride in the car oh. and walk along. Uh, they seem to be have uh, a couple of like some sort of beast of burdens that are that are leading the cart or pulling the cart. Is the ceiling very uh, high up or? Yep, mm -hmm. it's a big kind of a big cavern. So I'll summon Sova and have her fly up to kind of keep an aerial view. I will do the same thing, except that I won't summon the little thing, um, poor cat. Well, Ask him politely. Hey, could... he's, he's right there already, so. Yeah. Just ask him to um, take a, a watch with Silva. He I'll have her like kind him. of... Go ahead. I'll, I'll have her kind of flying facing forward and I'll offer to take the back of the cart and keep watch behind us. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I can take the front seat as well if no one else wants it. Well, I'll take uh, the bench right next, right next to where you're sitting. Crad's walking. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I was gonna off as I got up onto the back. I was gonna put my hand down and reach for him, see if he wanted to go up or not. You're good. Okay. Get that cardio in. Jim Jar and um, Prince Darendel both climb aboard and actually climb on top of the oar. Uh, they kind of find a good good footing and kind of set themselves in something that's kind of comfortable to kind of shift around and hear the rocks kind of <laughs> but uh, nothing seems to fall out it's, it's like popping up over the top but uh, there seems to be enough um, it's just kind of like a tip and then it's just kind of like flattened they are kind of flattening it out but it's still below where the top of the cart would be which is only about like four or five feet deep uh, Eldith pops up on uh, the other side next to the to Melden. Um, the bench is like on the from the side of the cart. And who else? Gage does uh, pops up on one of the sides as well. Actually, it pops up next to Syra. Holly just walks. I'm assuming. Hmm. I got everybody there. Cover everybody there. Darren Dill, Jim Jar on top of the cart. Eldith on one side, Ronta on the other, flanking the uh, driver's seat in the passenger where Lathar is. And Holly and Krat are walking. Sound right? Yeah. Sarah's so watching the back. Yeah, and Gage is next to Syrah. Yeah. All right, well, I get everybody to roll me perception checks as the cart starts making its way down what appears to be a long, windy road. Tyra. You're silver. So she got an 18, and I got a 20. I believe I got a 21. Borcat got a 10. Looks like Gage got a 23. Ooh. Siren, Lassiter, Jim Jar. Gage, maybe Darren Dell.
double checking them quickly. There was The path winds through a bunch of stalactites and stalagmites, and as you get closer, you finally get to see a large metal gate uh, as you approach, uh, blocking the entrance to what looks like some sort of, well, actually, you're not sure. It's just a big metal gate. Is that it, Jim Jar? Is that yeah. pulling this down? Uh, that's it. We're almost out of here, gentlemen and lady. Oh. Ladies. I can almost taste it. The air. Mm -hmm. She'll kind of look over at Karad, see how he feels about all this. As you approach, the gate seems to open, and behind it you see a uh, set of stairs and two ramp, or and one ramp on one side. And I want to do this. Do 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 do. For the purpose of this, is there? No, that's not the right size. Actually, I'm going to do this. Do, 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 do. This is one of those times where I need a group token. I think. We can use a little board cat. As a group token. Or continue using Jim Jar. But then again, Jim Jar would be on the map. And so would Little Boar Cat. So, I don't know. I'm like, I don't think he's a different map. We could use a flump. Because oh, yeah, this map is bigger than it appears. Welcome to Blingdenstone. Blingdenstone is a 
cave system? This whole uh, place is a cave system. <laughs> Alright, can you see the whole map or? In the underdark, or underground, <laughs> everything's gonna be a cave system. Yes, we can see the whole map. Right, yes. Save settings. There we go. How's that look? And now it's just slightly dimmer. Yeah, because it was the other dark. Alright, you do... Mm -hmm. Do you, you see Jim Jar, right? Yeah. Yes. Right, that's where you are. Oh, I can s totally see someone getting uh, lost in here. Like you? I said someone. Yeah. <laughs> someone can include you. I don't. I don't know why you had to like specifically <laughs> say me. <laughs> oh, I could have gone deeper. I heard Ron say that one time. Woof. Whoa. So, uh, it's about 300 feet up the steps, or about mm, maybe 250 feet up the steps. Uh, the steps seem to be designed for smaller feet. Jim Jar has no problem being a deep gnome himself, uh, but it is a little bit of diff difficult terrain. Uh, they have you exit the cart while they guide it over to the ramp on the side. You have arrived at the gates of Blindenstone. Yay. Right, we made it. So, Jim Jar, does, do things look different than uh, when you were last year? No, these are yeah. the gates to Blindenstone. We have to go up here, then there's the whole thing. It's complicated. We get checked in or something? Yeah, I mean, well, well, let's start by going up to the guards, trying to see if they can let us in. I should be able, I hope I will be able to help out with that. I think I should be. Well, hopefully. You said that you're known? I mean, I am from here. So, are we going? Yeah. All right. We'll jump out. Oh, are we staying with the cart or? We... Yeah, the cart seems to be going off to the ramp to be pulled up. Ah. Oh yeah, you said we're going upstairs. So, yeah. I'll jump out. Wait until everyone else follows. If they follow. Uh, walking up these steps is a little difficult because these steps are not made for medium-sized creatures. They're meant for small creatures such as deep gnomes, like Jim Jar. Because, you know, Jim Jar is much smaller than you guys. Red's just, like, breezing up these steps and the rest are like, oh god. Nope. Crad is a medium creature. It's still difficult to yeah. train for him. Oh, I thought he was smaller. Okay. I'm I'm small on the medium scale, but I'm still a medium creature. You've got big feet. Uh. Damn. I saw I had a spell that gets rid of um difficult terrain effects, but might have gotten rid of it. What was that expedition tree? Maybe. I mean, it just takes you longer. You're not in the middle of a battle or anything. I don't know. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'd probably be bougie right now if I wanted to really be bougie. Uh, how are you? Flop. How would you be bougie? Levitating. Struggling to go upstairs. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have. No, it's just slow going. <laughs> well. <laughs> Elevator going up. 
just just uh make direct eye contact with a uh, uh, I forgot her name. Byron. No, uh, one of our teammates, the female, Elif? the dwarf. No, it's a Holly? player character, Holly. Getting a little tired of the bullshit, I'll just use Reduce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You become small about the a little... You be, end up being shorter than Jim Jar. He kind of, like, looks over at you, being like... You you know that's gonna not gonna... The, show, they're not gonna think you're actually a deep gnome, right? Oh, no, it's, this is more just the walking bullshit up these steps. Uh, more comfortable build, more comfortability. Yeah, I see. Yeah, sorry yeah, about the stairs. No meant, to be no. meant to be yeah. nose. Hey, oh, hi guys! Uh, as you get up the stairs, you see eight eight deep gnomes guarding the gate. I probably just oh man. I drop concentration as soon as we get out of the stairs, off the stairs. So, whoop. Uh, one of them. Uh, I have to get one free use of that every day. Enlarge? Yeah. Reduce. Enlarge reduce uh, as a racial trait. I can use that once a day, and then I can use spell slots to do it more. Just like my invisibility. Noise. Door card, door card. up the steps. I'm reverse surfing up the stairs. You know, just trying to keep a low profile. Can you move it with your mind? I think I, it moves. It says, I can, it says, like, you can move it up uh, the way this place. Disc is immobile. It's, I don't know. It's immobile while you You can move across it. uneven terrain, up or down stairs, slopes, and the like. But it's okay. immovable while you are within 20 feet of it. If you move more than 20 feet Aww. away from it, the disc follows you, so that remains within 20 feet. So I can carry somebody else, then? Yes. Holly, well, who Holly, wants Holly. a ride? Holly hops on. <laughs> Spells it. <laughs> I, just, I saw that coming. <laughs> as soon as she tried to jump on, just got it. Oh no, my spell. Stop and dispels it. <laughs> Oops, Oops, I dropped concentration. Oops, it looks mean? like you're too heavy. <laughs> All that salt in your hair. Uh, you He's walking. Mumber under her butt. <laughs> breath, bitch. <laughs> Better salt in my hair than salt in my personality. <laughs> Anyways, moving up. <laughs> moving up Daddy bitches. Stairs now. I mean, it just takes you twice as long to get to the end of it than that it would be. There's no resistance, no no danger in anything. Just a salty crew uh, throwing shade at, at each other as they go up the steps, or at least two women doing it. Salty bitches. <laughs> you get up the stairs. Uh, you see these eight guards. Uh, one of them uh, looks at you all kind of quizzically, and uh, he holds holds up a gem, uh, mutters something under his breath, breath, and kind of like look scans around. Uh, okay, clear. Uh, what's your business here in Blindenstone? Uh, we seek passage back to the upper world. I don't know what to call it. Surface. In surface world. That was pressure. Uh, couldn't you go back the way you came? I don't recognize you lot. But you. You. Hey, hey, hey. Look, I've been gone for a while, I've been doing some scouting, and it got a little caught from 
uh, by by the drow. We escaped. These guys help me out. They be, they're good people. Trust me. Oh, it's more like he helped us out. Uh, and don't mind the Ghidorah guy. He helped us out as well. He's kind of an outcast from his people. He's he'll be fine. He, he came here to seek work. Uh, we got we got some people who just want to get out of here. We got some people. We, we got him who just wants to find a place of refuge. And don't worry, he won't cause any trouble. Right, Karad? Right. Trust me, he's some hot stuff. Uh, let's see. I would like whoever would like to lead this charge to roll me a perception check. Or a uh, persuasion check with advantage. I could do that. Sorcerer should do it. Hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, was... Jimmy Jarge was like, go ahead, talk to him, talk to him, Crad. Hey, you, you're trying to sell yourself? You, you can do it. You want to work here, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. 21. Excellent. So what do you say? So how are you? So the guards kind of like looking at you kind of like well, suspiciously. What do you tell uh, this, this guard? Why is my play? What was the question again? My point. <laughs> why should we let? Why should we let you into Blinden Stone? Like, what are you doing here? Why do, should we trust you to, get, to enter here? You're a Dorgar who's taken some of us as slaves. Slaves, we've uh, we've had we have Dude, these they're... weird outsiders. We don't know who they are. We don't know why they're here. Something about about the drow, Jim Drow. Yeah, we kind of know him. He's been a scout for us. He's been there's something about Jim Jar where it's like there you could probably into it that they kind of don't one hundred percent trust him, but he. It seems like they trust him more than they trust the rest of you right now. So, um, my... conv convince them to allow you into the gates. We are all here for... majority of them are here for a reason. Uh, getting back to the surface, they had been... My companions had been kidnapped from multiple different locations. Jim Char being included in this. And they just, they just want to get back home. Um, I understand your... Disdain against my kind. Um, I too was somewhat of a slave. Um, I was held in secret, mostly against uh, in my order. Um, finally, rebelled against them, broke free. She might have heard some confuffle uh, stuff going on in uh, Grickelstuk right now. That's because of us. Um, I'm here looking for work and to make a new life for myself. Um, I am an excellent cook, most of these people can attest, plus I am a smith by trade. Um, I know how to craft many of things. Um, we are just out looking for our home. Some new, some old. And we were told that of all of the places we can go, this would be our best option for you guys. For the people of Blinden Stone are, above all, the best. All right. However, Jim Jar. Yeah, Jim Jar hasn't said his name at all during this entire time. Um, Jim Jar, um, you said you were captured by the drow and you fled. Uh, yes, sir. And these people, uh, except the Duragar here. What's her name? Grad. Grad. So, 
escaped and caused some trouble in Grackle Stew. The chief will want to hear about this. All right, open the gate, and the gate opens up. You gotta have a police system. <laughs> Uh, you don't see how the gate is being opened up. You just see that the gate is being opened up. And you are led into what looks to be some sort of twisty, windy road. Hey, how does that gate work? Uh, same thing as any other gate. Up and down. Ah, I see. Pulley system. You just have it, like, inside the walls. Harder to get to if someone tries to invade. Yeah. Or get in. That's Very smart. the point. What if they have explosives? Uh, it's a reinforced wall. Besides the fact, look at this. And you've been walking through this, like, winding path. You can see... Oh. Let's see if we got... A twisting, turning path that runs between ten, ten foot high walls studded with nails. Path slopes up and down, so sections can be... He, he explains like, kind of like what the defense of this area is. Uh, the pa path slope up and down so that sex sections can be flooded or inundated with poison smoke. Uh, there are a few points where uh, all you medium creatures have to kind of squeeze through. Isn't uh, Ron large? Uh, he has a large build, but he's a medium creature. Right. So there are certain things that he's considered for for large, like a uh, um, strength, uh, uh, like carrying capacity. But uh, don't, his actual physicality is just a large. He he's just on the large side of medium. <laughs> don't large creatures uh, take up uh, more than one square? Yes. Yes. Okay. They take like how Crad is on the smaller end of medium. Ront is on the larger end of medium. They still consider medium, but all these size categories are arranged. <laughs> you do see. You do see story. above uh, some. Uh, you know, what seems to be like a, some other path uh, above, which is inaccessible from where you came in. It seems inaccessible? Yes. Uh, from your, where you, you came in. This upper path seems to be festooned with towers and battlements. So... Mm -hmm. They, they could have defenders that would be firing into this winding path. Oh, so there's like, uh, called murder holes kind of dug into the little walls. Essentially. Did you say murder holes? Yes, that's a that's an actual thing. Oh. Back in like actual medieval times, there were like holes that they built to the walls to Spear people or shoot arrows or yeah, or like um, the arrow slits in the castle. Yeah, that's a yeah, real yeah. thing. I I imagine something totally different. Not what you would want to do in private. No. <laughs> how how would anyone come up with that with the word murder in the name? Murder that ass. Oh. Just like that. 
Okay. Sure. Town, let's find a, a place to stay with with thicker walls this time. Yeah, none of these murder holes. Don't worry, yours is Ron's favorite. I put my imaginary hood on. <laughs> trying to figure out how this works. Because we need to get up here. I believe there are some stairs here, if I'm reading the map correctly. Which takes you up Ooh. into that upper level. Zoom on. And he takes you here, and you walk through, you pass through another door. It's a labyrinth. It literally is. See two stone towers embedded into the walls, and see, peering through shuttered windows in each tower are four deep gnomes, eight in all. We're being led, right? Yeah, you're, you've got an armed escort. Yeah. So those eight guards, like four of them are with you, so they split in half. Okay. For a second, I thought Jinjar was just leaving us. So now that we're with actual citizens, um, so we've heard that there were some troubles in your past, and by the looks of all these uh, towers, I guess still having some issues. What's been plaguing the town? Uh, right now, not much to really be. Uh, I uh, consider we're still just working on a rebuilding effort. Uh, we put this in place as one of the first things when we started, uh, when we returned. Uh, I'm saying this in the wrong voice. Uh, this is uh, some of the bit, uh, some of the defenses we put in place when we returned to make sure that we can uh, complete our rebuilding efforts in peace. Led by, led by the. Um, Led by the the diggermatics. We wanted to make sure that we had a defensible position because the last time we were here we had an army of army of drow that attacked us. So we tried to make sure to put up as much of a defense as we possibly can to prevent that in the future. Do you know their leader's name? Of the Drow? Yeah. I don't know who the current leaders are. I mean, this all happened previously about two millennia ago. We have just started returning now. It's been a few years since we've returned, returned to work on the project, but we're still in our rebuilding phase. We've been gone for a long time. Have, have the drow come in that time to uh, try and retake the city again? Fortunately, not recently. Well, that's a relief, then. I think we've all had enough of the drow. Uh, in this tunnel, you see... It's about 30 feet high. Embedded in the walls, you see uh, various gems. This seem to be about 30 feet apart and about 15 feet above the, above the uh, rough-hewn floor. Seem to be set in some sort of sockets. Nice. How much do you think those are worth? Uh, I wouldn't try pulling any of those out. Of course not. I'm not a thief. Well, also, you couldn't. There's a fix there by, with southern glue. Oh. So you put them there? Yes, they're there as part of our defense. Those are spell gems. Nice little disguise. Well, they don't necessarily need to be disguised. They just need to be permanently there for whenever we need you. We have use of them. It would be really foolish for some random thief to just pick one up. 
No, of course not. Again, they were fixed to the walls with uh, sovereign glue. Will you try to? I mean, they can. They could attempt to, but it would be quite, quite difficult. They would need something like a universal solvent or oil of ethereal illness. Heck, they would probably need a wish spell. Oh, interesting. I'm just making conversation. What? I'm learning what to say. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Blingdenstone. You leave, you leave the dark tunnel behind and step into what looks like another world. These aren't sinister drow caverns or harsh bare stone, but a subterranean land of warm colors and welcoming smells. The deep gnomes you see going about their business glance up at you with suspicion, but you instinctively understand that you face no threat here. When the guards escorting you, you abandon his severe frown to give a deep nod as he prompts you to enter the inner gate. Welcome to Blingdenstone, travelers. Welcome to Fantasy Isle. Uh, I gotta remember where we're trying to go to. Okay. <laughs> We're trying to get home. Anyways, moving on. Uh, if you would follow me, if you would follow me, I would like to to take you to the Digomatics as soon as uh, Chief Digomatic as soon as possible. I snap a quick picture of the scenery. I'm just kidding. I don't have a camera. Let's see. So as you move through some of these caverns, you'll you'll come across points where it kind of like mm -hmm. it, it gets smaller. The deep gnomes can walk right on through, but any of you medium creatures will have to kind of like squeeze through. Uh, your uh, escort uh, walks through and then kind of. Uh, graciously waits on the other side as you pass through. Uh, pardon the squeeze through. I'm trying to get you here quickly. Uh, there's a longer route, but uh, a little more, less comfortable. Uh, but uh, uh, it would take a, take us much longer. I think it's very important that we reach the digomatics, and plus I also haven't charted out a more comfortable course, so you're going to have to work with me here. Mm, let's see. Okay. Uh, Ront is very disgruntled, so he looks at Ront and be like, hmm, this way, please. And he takes you in this direction. Let's actually give you a little instruction about what's happening here. Uh, let's see here. We are at... Uh, be careful in this area. There are we do happen to have a uh, have a few ghosts which are still hanging around from when the town was invaded. I was muted. Uh, Lasser goes, I'm sorry, what? Oh, we oh. we have some ghosts around here. Don't worry about them. They're mostly harmless. Mostly? Yes. I take out my holy symbol and just hold it close to me. <laughs> they mostly come out at night. Mostly. <laughs> He holds it closer to himself. Well, I guess this place being a uh, a past battleground, 
That's not too unexpected. The area does seem to be like some sort of residential district with a few hovels along the, along the walls. Ooh, I think I know the uh, spell ceremony. I do. You wanna get hitched? Go no, I, I can, uh... Castle and gonna get married. Oh, wrong spell. What's do I see for a week? There's a spell you can cast that, um, sends spirits back, I think. I might be thinking of a totally different game. And spirits. Oh, fireball. <laughs> yeah, fireball. I got oh, that one. Quickly. <laughs> right now, the highest I can right. cast it is 5th level, which is 10d6 plus 5. I'm pretty sure it will do the job. So he leads you into a uh, uh, open area in this residential district, and he walks up some some stairs, and and he says, uh, "Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the home, home of the Digomatics. Two dozen Digomatic. or so, yeah." Two dozen or so Smurf Neblin uh, occupy this well-lit cavern where some moving briskly with messenger pouches in hand while others huddle around several stone tables covered in maps. Keep in mind this map is bigger than like the token. So it's like your entire party is, is fit probably just portion of Jim Jar's token. I'm just having you using Jim Jar's token as a kind of marker where you are. Okay. They hunt around stone tables covered in maps and other papers, talking in hushed, uh, hushed, serious tones. The back of the room is dominated by a dais carved from the rock of the cavern, atop which rest two stone desks facing each other. Two Smurf Nublin, one male and one female, sitting behind the desks, conferring with advisors and, and each other. They turn their attention to you as you enter. Look at Jim Jar and kind of nudge him forward. Well, hey, uh, uh, Dorobo and and Senny, uh, uh, Chief, Chief, Chief. Uh, I would like you to meet some of my friends here. Uh, I'm Jim Jar. If you don't remember, I'm was a scout. Uh, got caught by um, some drow. Uh, were taken to a place called Velkenvel before they were going to sell me, take me to Maison Berazan. Uh, we lost them, don't worry. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, my friends here are just looking to, to, uh, get back to the surface. They belong, uh, and, and they've got a excellent, uh, worker here looking for work. Um, yeah, and then the two just kind of uh the male kind of kind of waves a hand at, at some of the advisors and they back off and says Jim Jaw as much as you help with this scouting you've also been a little bit of a troublemaker here. But well, welcome home. As for you people well and see what we can do. But first, I would ask that you help us out with a few matters that we have in the city. And then we can see about helping you get to the surface and maybe find some sort of occupation for your Durgar friend. Please, introductions, please. Jim Jar. So, uh, yeah, y yes, Chief. Um, uh, uh, I got uh, Karad uh, here. He's uh, an outcast from his people, uh, looking to start a better life. He's a forge and a, and a cook. Right, right, Karad? Correct. 
uh, makes excellent meals. Trust me, I've had plenty of them, and that's on the road. Think of what he can do with the proper kitchen. And then he can also do a bunch of forging for you. Durga, you know, we get a lot of stuff from mental, mental Dara of a dwarven make. If you have a dwarf. You have a Durgar here to help you forge it and my help out, right? The chief kind of likes mm, gives a kind of a kind of waves at at, at him it's like go on. Uh we've got uh Eldith. Uh, uh where are you from, Eldith? Uh, uh I'm from Mithril Hall. And uh his uh, the uh, Digger Maddox um, ears kind of perk up, like, oh, friends. Uh, we have Holly. Uh, 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 she's 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 quite tough and pretty and beautiful for that matter. How does Holly react to Jim Jars saying she's beautiful? Kind of just like, duh. Air flip. We have the lovely and talented Syra. We have the. Oh, okay. I have to, I have to do my my presentation. You know, hair sparkles as he says that. My my L'Oreal commercial because I'm worth it. We we also have the stoic gauge. Stoic uh, Gage just bows at your service. Uh, we've got uh, the, the uh, cleric here, um, Lassiter. Uh, honestly, he's a little bit drunk, but don't worry, it's not a problem. Uh, he's being held in line by the orc. I know it seems weird, but it's true. The orc's name is Rot. He's in charge of those two. Cute couple, aren't they? Uh, I'd like you to meet Prince Darendel of... Uh, where are you from, Darendel? Uh, I can't remember where he said he was from. Uh, never the vein in the high forest. Pleased to meet you. And he gives this very, very elegant for a Quagas bow. And am I missing anybody? And uh, that would be everybody. Uh, excellent fighters. We've been, we've been doing a lot uh, on our way here. We kind of circled around through Grackle Stew where, uh, well, mistakes were made. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, we dropped some people. Up. We went over to Never the Lake Grove. There was a problem there. There we escaped with our lives. Uh uh, we uh, got here with the help of some very nice Mykonids, honestly. Uh, one which we actually saved from Servitude back in Falcon Pelf. Elf, a cute kid, honestly. I. We were hoping he might want to continue with us, but he decided to stay with his people. They actually got us here. Uh, well, outside of, on the out, outside the Alan came through and through the mines. Everything's fine fine now all we're here Karad's looking for a job to, to start a new life uh i'm here to be at your service yet again and uh these these ladies and gentlemen uh it's just looking for some sort of passage to the surface they want to get out of here as quickly as possible i'm sure they're willing to do whatever they need to get some help with that am i right the sooner the better please The two dag dagger maddocks kind of look at each other. Well, let's see. Oh, you just review, review all this. We've got, there's a lot to Blinged in Stone. Like, 
Grackles, dude, was so much easier than Blinging Stone, so bear with me here. Did I insight, like, the, um, mood of the room? Like, uh, do I get, like, a menacing vibe from anyone? Or, like, a shady vibe? Besides Jim uh, Jar? Roll me an insight check. Probably gonna be bad. <laughs> yep. Oh, is that another nine? That is another nine. Nine. Uh, hard to read. They seemed a little bit guarded. Uh, maybe a little suspicious or something. Jim Jar just seems nervous. He says, well, at this point in time, we can offer you a safe haven on the condition that you cause no tr trouble for the community. As for reaching the surface, I would like to help, but right now, Blinging Stone is under severe pressure and we can't spare anyone to guide you. Moreover, moreover, we don't really don't really allow strangers to borrow any of the maps that we have to go on your own, which might not necessarily be safe. We're not strangers. We're friends of Jimjar. Well, you may be friends of Jimjar, but to us, you are still strangers. In the meantime, you are welcome to, welcome to stay. And again, as long as you don't cause any trouble, trouble, we will provide you that safe haven. Uh, Seems fair. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, is there... Uh, is there anywhere we could, like, uh, rest for the... time? I don't know if it's night time or not. What my friend is saying is, do we have lodgings here? Oh, uh, we can, we can definitely find some. Merrick, can you see uh, when the advisors uh, pop out. Yeah, uh, can you please see about uh, some lodgings? We don't really have much at this point in time. As more people are coming in, uh, we are running a little low on space, and well, there are a few issues in regards to that. But we do have a place where all of you. We'll be able to stay. It might be a little tight quarters for now. We're used to that. Right, guys? Like, we're, we're so comfortable with each other as we're ever going to be. So, uh, Merrick. Uh, takes you down the steps and leaves you, uh, uh, is ready to lead you to some lodging. So do you have any other business with the Digger Maddox? Or? Not I. Uh, Jim Jar said he knew where we could drop off the package that we're also carrying. Yes. Let me get reference to that quickly here. Hey. Yeah, I won't, I won't mention that out loud. When we were somewhere like in this area, maybe, or maybe over here, um, you had mentioned uh, something was wrong with Ront. Like he was disgruntled. Oh, he uh, was disgruntled trying to squeeze through small spaces. Ah, okay. Yeah. I missed that part. I've been worrying about it ever since. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna step verify a few things here. Do 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 do. Oh, that's all I wanna do.
All right. So, uh, the first off, uh, uh, Merrick uh, takes you over to uh, what looks to be a abandoned housing unit. Uh, there looks to be some gnome-sized beds, uh, about two of them, uh, in there. Otherwise, uh, it seems relatively unfurnished. But a nice little hovel that you could, you know, make up for your own if you would like, in some some way, shape, or form. Jimmy goes, goes, goes. All right, so I know where the central market is here, and that's probably where we're gonna be able to find after Merrick leaves and everything. You're you're alone. He kind of peeks out the door, make sure everything's all clear. And he goes, uh, we can head off to the uh, central market, uh, do a little bit of exploring. Uh, know where our residence is for right now. Uh, and uh, the central market is probably where we'll be able to run into uh, Kazook Pickshine. We can deliver those, uh, that sack. Let's go. I don't quite feel like we shouldn't even have this. I think we need something more like this. All right. Follow me. Uh, Ron's like, this place is a little tight for me. I think I, I'm just going to stick here. Uh, Darren says, says, same for me, too. I think I'll rest up here. Elda says, huh, just let me know when we're getting out. If you need me for anything. Basically, I'm dropping, right. off, dropping off the NPCs. You only have Jim Jar. Uh I would like to just bring, uh, take uh, Ron to the side and tell him he better be back when we get back. He better be here when we get back. Look, as much as I want to get out of here, get out of here as soon as possible. I'm not leaving without you. You're the only thing that's keeping me here. Don't last long. Got it? Gotcha. All right. And I'll walk away. Jim Jar leads you. He's trying to find like the bigger hallways. Let's see. Does this have a description? Here we see a cave that's fortified with barricades, and it looks like there's about eight deep gnomes and four cave badgers. We'll look Cave the Badger. Guardian support. Yep. Let's see, do I have a, a thing that shows Cave Badgers? Are those those things in the Avatar? That those are Badger moles. Ah. Yeah, I don't have any hand- handouts for that. What kind of look? It's like? a giant badger. Yeah, it just looks like a large badger. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a badger before. Uh, as you're walking past, says, hey, hey, you. Uh, one of the guards says, uh, keep watch out. Just want to let you know that there's been a Medusa lurking in the caverns behind these doors. So please stay away as much as you possibly can. Okay. A Medusa? Yeah. Don't worry. We, we, we'll keep you safe. Well, here. thank you. Oh, How in the yeah. world did that get down here? I've seen mad badgers before. It, uh, Jim Dreyer says over 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 your shoulders. Hey, we've been gone for two millennia. You think nobody's gonna gonna try to to make take up residence here while we were gone? Yeah. Traveling through here, 
We see kind of a, a templish sort of area. Actually, he's probably going to go this way. Uh, traveling kind of around the edge here, we see it kind of a, a temple uh, sort of area. Did you say temple? Yeah. Uh, are there so it looks like there's, real... uh, there's like an altar in the center of the area right here. Uh, it. Can I do a religion check? Yeah, sure. On it. it... Dude. What are my roles? <laughs> uh, you're not sure. You're not really familiar too much with with uh, uh, deep gnome religious practices. The shot. But it looks like it's a place, uh, kind of an open place where where rituals could be performed or something, just like regular day to day duties. Uh, this room has a bunch of uh, fungi. And it looks like we got two blocked off passages here and here. All the usual fungi that we've seen along the way. Yeah, you see some barrel stocks, blue caps, some nidhog noses, uh, torch stocks, and uh, uh, triple mix. How blocked are the... Uh paths uh they're like completely caved in oh. oh okay i see i was gonna ask if i could like <clears throat> be through excuse me be through like rocks or uh, like holes but it's good i don't want to obviously look at something that they're tr probably trying to hide. And you enter into an area which looks to be some sort of market. Uh, you see a bunch of gnomes kind of scouring stalls. And you see what looks to be an alchemist alcove. It says, ah, there she, there she is. And she points you to a to his stall where there's a uh, gnome with a uh, uh, few. Uh, you see some gems, gems in glass cases, as well as uh, uh, some vials of different types of liquids. Or not she, he, excuse me. Yeah, I was thinking. That's all right. I mean, I don't have the bag. If one of you wants to to go deliver it, who has the bag of gems? Is that what that? I think I do. I think we put it in the bag of holding. Yeah. Well, with I'll your ability to turn and invisible, hit. it might be best for you to do it. Yeah, but I don't know where the person's located. I didn't pay attention. That was Jim no. Jim Jar goes goes, that's Kazook. And he points to, to Kazook's stall, which has glass it has like the glass cases full of uh different types of uh, colors of gems and some potion potion vials. Uh something tells me you kinda wanna be subtle at this. So I go talk to him first, maybe try to pull him to the side, and then deliver the gems. That's, that's all I'm saying. Well, I guess I'll try my hand. I'll hand so, you the bag. So, 
right. She'll slip it back into the bag and walk up to her. Just at first, kind of perusing her wares, not really, you know, just it's looking around, him. seeing what I, she's. I, I said oh, I'm sorry, she, him. Uh, him uh, uh, mistakenly. For some reason, I think Kazook is a is a female, but I was. Could I? Part. Could I had a cast guidance on Syrah before she left? Sure. Uh, I'll I'll pat you on your back and say you got this. Guidance. You add a D four to your ability checks. Uh, only one. need because. I'm not great at talking. Uh, let's let me see this before. I... You feel this warmth of radiant things, and it's just like, hmm, feels good. You feel confident in yourself. So she'll step up to his stall. <clears throat> and take a look at the wares. Just, you know, a genuinely genuinely uh, curious about what he has for sale. A uh, gold pseudo dragon flies from Lassiter's shoulder and kind of lands on the uh, glass case which is, contains the gems and kind of like looks at him. Uh, well, I... Uh... Hey, what's... Look, hey, what's this? Ah, uh, you little, little dragon-like creature! You you stay away from these gems. What can I Did... do for you, Miss? Oh, pl please don't mind him. It's he's a uh, familiar of my friend over there, and she'll kind of point over to Lassiter. Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> not very good at controlling his familiars, I guess. Yes, I can read. It's a... in common. It's a uh, interesting. Relationship, in, to say the least. But, but please, well, where are my manners? My name is Cyrus. Nice to meet you. Zook Pickshine, welcome to my shop. And then you, uh, you see this change in, in uh, little Borkad. He, he uh, kind of perks up and kind of like gets into a good position, like sits there and looks like he's like perfectly behaving. He, I oh, uh, connection with him. Sir, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, you you feel you get this feeling of like helping. Oh, when did you learn how to do that? Uh, he 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 sends you this. He he doesn't visually see it like you can't see it on his on his face. Although uh, if you look closely, his eyes are rolling. Uh, I've always been able to do this. <laughs> yeah. Please tell me. Um, you, it seems like you have such interesting things here in your stall. And she'll just kind of point at a few things just to kind of. Oh, what is uh, this? Yeah. What is this? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of spell gems here. I've got some uh, various potions. If you need healing potions, I do have have those. Uh, I have uh, a couple of strength potions, um, which usually comes in handy for, for a lot of our mining efforts. They need a little bit of extra kick sometimes to get through some of the more more stubborn pieces. I see, Anything I in particular see. you are looking for? Um, as he says that, is there an area less populated, like with less of a crowd? Uh, he does have kind of like a, a section, like, uh, like what might be his, um, uh, like might be a place where he, he may not like, like do a little bit of work in the back so it's like this is a stall portion but he does have what might be like a little workshop stall like behind a curtain uh in a, in a more area behind the stall so, 
Well, I was thinking of something along this area over here, and she'll kind of walk over there, hope to catch yeah. his attention. He he kind of looks at you, and then a little bit Burkhead just kind of like flutters, fl- uh, kind of hops over to the side, and uh, she in uh, with his tail kind of taps the taps the bag, and kind of like gives his little head uh, a nod to, nod to the side, and then he look, goes back to his normal circumstances. And Kazoo kind of looks at him and be like, looks looks at your bag, says, and. If I could either stealth. Oh, go ahead. Uh, What were you going to do? This might affect what you say. Um, As she's kind of like wheeling around to that less populated area. Um, And I don't know if it would be stealth or sleight of hand to kind of nonchalantly like pull out the package to show him without others seeing it like like just briefly kind of like pull it from your bag just just like the tip yeah just just like yeah just like kind of flash it a little bit without drawing a lot of yeah. attention okay roll me a sleight of hand with advantage okay sleight of hand with advantage 13 with 13 a d4 because i'm guidance. Fourteen. All right. Uh, so you're able to. You're at a place where you see a uh, uh, little Borcad kind of like moves into a slightly different position, which seems to have actually covered um, any visibility of the your bag from anybody that might be looking around. He kind of like lets a wing out. Just kind of like looks like he's stretching, and you pull 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 the bag out just enough that uh, he kind of like looks at your bag and goes, uh, come with me. Come with me in the back. I think I have something that might you might be of interest in. And he leads you into the back room. She'll kind of give a glance back at her companions like it's going down. Uh, a little boar cat looks proud of himself. And just to, to keep it up, he like kind of hops down and and basically kind of follows and just kind of like looks behind and just kind of like looks around and then pops behind the curtain so now you're in kind of a background where you see like uh it's it's not spacious but it's uh, big enough that somebody could could move around and has a bunch of different alchemical equipment uh there's like a cabinet the cabinet against one of one of the walls walls you do see what looks to be maybe um some spell gems that are in the process of being enchanted enchanted you have something for me don't you yes oh it was it's uh Wirtz sent us to uh, deliver this package uh, to you starts clapping ah yes Oh, excellent! Give me, give me, give me, give me. Let me take. Let me expect it. Don't worry, I've got, I've got your payment. You hand him the. Uh, can I insight first to see if there's actually payment? Yeah. yeah. I see into his very soul. He's so <laughs> excited. There is payment. Probably not necessarily as much as you want, but there's definitely payment. May or may not. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. Depends on what you think, but there's definitely payment. He's got payment. Wait. Oh, yeah. I will hand it over. He, he, he takes the bag and he kind of looks inside, just kind of like briefly goes, through. this is perfect. I'm going to be so rich. All right. As agreed, I have payment. And he puts the bag to, to the side, goes into a cabinet, and pulls out uh, a, a zircon gem. This will fetch you about 50 gold pieces. This is the greed amount really? that, I, that I agreed upon with words. Honestly, those gems in and of themselves... Maybe about two gold pieces each. 
it's after I'm done with them when they are much cost much, much more. Is there some property to this? No. Or it's just, it's just like like more refined cut? No, it's just a, a gem worth 50 gold pieces. Okay. No, it's not. This just gem like, isn't intended or anything. Okay. Well, honestly, not as much as I was hoping for, but perhaps with this uh, successful transaction, maybe you can open up your store to the rest of us? Maybe some some things that are not open to the public? Ah, I see where you're coming at. Honestly, everything I make, I sell, so there's nothing specific. Specific. But, thanks to your help, I will give you guys a 10% discount. Look, knowing that my charisma sucks. Uh... Uh, you you see a little uh, pseudo dragon kind of pop up, look at you, and look at him, and his eyes seem to be slightly narrowed. And some he's looking at you and says, "says Do it, do it, do it now." This is what you're feeling. For some reason, you're feeling and... th- these things. <laughs> Would I fill that too? I mean, if you're still connected, you feel like he's trying to communicate to Sarah, uh, to Syrah. No, he, he's ripping you off. You need to, dis- you need to convince him to bring that, to give you a bigger discount. Can I send a guidance through him? Roll me an insight check. It's a- Technically, it's a touch spell. Uh, which kind of could. With the uh, pack, um, pack of the chain. Players, you can send mm-hmm. spells through them. Uh, you said insight. Mm-hmm. Let me an insight uh, check. Oh, nice. Cool. Okay, you realize. Syra hasn't used your guidance spell. All right. And so. you also realize that she, when she was doing her, her little thing, you saw that she was doing something, but Borka kind of was hiding something that apparently some, he was helping not just by giving her advantage, but also giving her some sort of bonus. He's making things lucky. Or something. There's something about him that's enhancing this experience. You see, uh, Sarah, you see, you see, you see a little Borkad look at you being like, you can do it. So, feeling that, that urging on, she'll try to lay whatever charm she has and kind of, you know, Slick back her hair a little bit, kind of make it a little shinier, you know. Like, well, you know, to to get here, we've we've had to endure such such trials and the the, the beasts that are down here. You just you wouldn't imagine. I mean, I would I would really appreciate if you could maybe bump it up a little more, like fifteen. Perhaps even twenty percent, and she'll kind of like lean a little closer and kind of expose some know. cleavage. Just, just the one shoulder. She, she, she's chased. Okay. <laughs> Give me a persuasion check with advantage. Sucks so bad. Eh. Oh, oh no. I would I would like you to now roll me a D twelve. Oh no. That's a total of twenty. Kazoo's looking at you like No, 
Yeah, that's fair. You know what? You're right. You're right. I. 20%. Fact. I think you guys deserve more. And uh, he goes looking into, into his store. And I need to search out spell gems. That's not what I want. You had like a plus nine to your something. Or that Actually, was sending his his good fortunes. <laughs> yeah, little Borkat was manipulating the situation. All right, it was what Jedi mind tricking? In a roll. Is there a Zircon? No. Or something. Roll me a D one hundred. Right in the middle. Oh, that was Karad that had the plus nine. My bad. I have a plus one. That's why I was like, my charisma kind of sucks. <laughs> so if you want intelligence or dexterity, I'm your I'm your girl. So he's, he's, <laughs> he's, fumbling, he's fumbling through a box and he says, eh, not this. Uh, oh, this will be good. Uh, and he pulls out what looks to be a, a, a green gem. And it says, mm, yeah, I think this will do. And he says, wait a minute, uh, tell me something. Uh, are you a magic user? Indeed I am. Okay, uh, what type of magic user? She, she'll kind of... Uh... Tap at her, tap at her waist to her spell book. Ah, smart. Okay, cool. Let's see here. Uh, where's the reference that I'm looking for here? We're going to do some more rolls of luck here. Just trying to get a specifics on a few things. Not the type of filters I'm looking for. That's okay. I'll figure it out. All right. I need to read this some more. Okay, so filter by. All right, roll me a d6. Nice. 
I know. He goes, here, I think this might be of use for you. Let's just say it will come in very handy. And he hands you what looks to be a jade gem. Okay. And she'll she'll take it from him and kind of give him a look, like a like a, a quizzical look. By the way, it is reusable. We got a spell gem there. She will take and it to examine later, I guess. Again, it can come in handy. And he says it very specifically like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it was my greatest pleasure meeting you. And thank you for your, uh, well, your boons that you'll give to me and my, my companions. 20% off. And you got a nice spell gem there. And keep the Zerk on. Another 50 gold pieces on top of everything. I keep going into to the same accent for every single uh, deep down. I don't know why. Jim Jaws okay. totally totally speaks like this. That's for certain. Everybody else is more like a little bit slightly higher voice, and just because they're a little bit smaller, that's really where everybody is. Anyways, I appreciate doing business with you. Uh, I'm very excited to imbue these gems. <laughs> Trust me, it takes I think time. My, my, think my fellow magic uh, magic users will be more than happy to come shop at shop at your fine establishment, and she'll kind of give a little wink to him and make her way out. He he gives you a bow. Oh, hold on, and he uh, goes and shuffles through something else. Uh, how many friends you got? Nine of us total. Oh, okay. He goes in and he pulls out a, like a little stack of cards. Cards. Oh no. And he and he hands. hands oh no. To you and says, says, okay. So you each should have one of these. Just, just because uh, I don't know who your other friends are, uh, but so just each of you, as long as you have this, this, you get the twenty percent discount. No, don't worry. It's not like a punch card or anything. It doesn't wear out or anything. It's just perfect. I've imbued them so that even if you like accidentally dive in water and everything, it's perfectly fine. So, uh, but and you see on there a a just it's a it's a business card. <laughs> uh, essentially, it says uh, Gazook's pick, sh pick shines uh, uh, a chemical emporium. emporium. You, and you it, scared and it, me. I thought you were going to pull out the deck of many things. I was like, oh no, and, no. <laughs> No, no, it's just cards. It's not like in a deck. Oh God! Kind of it's just the card. Just cards. And, Pulls out and, a deck of twenty-two cards. <laughs> no. And it and it says premium <laughs> member. Honestly, I would test it just in case. But then again, if you test it, something bad could happen. So. <laughs> 50-50 shot. 
up to I mean, you, man. I mean, if you, it, it, they're not in a pack or anything, they're just open cards. So if you just like fan them out, you'll see they all look the same. I'm just saying, like the actual deck is literally you, fifty-fifty. You you turn it over, and one of them ends up saying Syrah. <laughs> just on the back. You turn the rest over. All of them say Syrah now. All named Syrah. Uh, yeah, you 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 take out that card that has your name. The other ones are blank. The front still has the whole like fancy like like business card thing. Kazook Pictures, uh, Alchemical Emporium premium member. It seems like one was assigned to you. Well, again, just give him a pretty big smile and like just kind of, you know, lay on what, what little charm she has and she will walk back to her companions. You see a little board cat has jumped back on onto the, the front thing and he looks like he does a little bow and he flies back over to Lasseter. I was, see, I was like, as, as she's walking past him, if she, if he'll allow it, it's kind of give him like a little, a little scratches on under his chin, you know, like you got a flutter. He kind of, as he's floating, then you, you kind of like hold out your hand to give scratches. He just kind of comes up, takes the scratches and kind of like, you see a little twitch. So, and he kind of like wobbles for a second because he's enjoying himself. And then he flies over the blast. Do you want to keep the guy? Oh, uh, uh, you do. As, as he's flying past you, he, he actually kind of like snatches one of the cards with, with his like uh, wing claw. And uh, brings it over to Laster. Actually, no. He he like bites down and grab, grabs it with his mouth and gives it to Laster. So I'll take it. Yeah, you take it, and you you see it says Kazook's pit, uh, Kazook Pit Shines uh, Alchemical Emporium. Strangely enough, it's in common um, premium member. And you flip it over, and it says on the back Laster. She'll hand one out to Karad and. To Gage and begrudgingly to Holly. Grad, you, you, do you, you take one of these cards. Uh, it says Kazook Pit Shine, but it's in Undercommon. And Alchemical Emporium, premium member, but it's all in Undercommon. You turn it over and it has your name in there. Hey. Um, I'm, he... assuming, I'm assuming this is magic, but. I'm not sure if Lasser would know that, so can I make a Arcana check? Sir? Uh, I don't know. That's up to you. It's quite possibly magic. Okay. I, mean, I mean, you didn't see anybody write your name on here. You just, like, when you turned it over, it seems like your your name just started scribing onto the back of the card. Yeah. So it was probably it was pretty clearly magic, like the specifics, how it is. You have no idea. Yeah, it's quite possibly just a really fancy yes. business card, or in so, this case, a premium membership card. So she'll she'll turn back to her her friends and, well, he was very pleased with our uh, with our ability to bring that package. He gave us this, and she'll present the Berserkin. He says it's worth at least 50 gold. But I, I was, thanks to some help, and she'll kind of give a little little smile to Bork out. He was able, I was able to get us a 20% discount, and he also gave us this, and she'll show the green gem. I'm not sure what it does yet. He gave you hmm? 20%. I thought you yeah, said twelve percent. Two zero. Okay, I just heard wrong. And and she'll show the green gem. She says, "I'm not sure what it does just yet, but he says it'll come very." And I quote, "Handy." But maybe I'll I'll look this up back at our uh, our lodgings. Can I hold it? I uh, sure, sure. Pass it along. 
Okay, um, Looks like I'm going to Jade Stone. It. Yeah. Um, is it hard? Yeah. Can I bite it? Stone. Yeah. Pretty solid, pretty solid piece of jade. Looks real to me. Yeah, and it looks like he has some uh, interesting spell gems and such for uh, for those of us that are magically gifted. He looks again at Karad and Lassiter. He may uh, he has some alchemical things, and I, I think, don't know especially why. with our discount. It might be a, a good place to shop or maybe even sell things. I keep on wanting to go ask him if he has a magic dagger. Yeah, he may. Oh. And but thinking I, about I that, she'll, she'll hand the bag of holding back to Karad. Uh, I mean, y'all want to y'all want to do some shopping real quick, or wait till mm. possibly tomorrow? I don't know what time it is. I would say that it's probably it, it. It's probably like the equivalent of late afternoon, early evening. So, I mean, you've been walking quite a ways and everything so you might be a little bit t- tired and would be okay to go, to go to bed at this time but uh you you, you you could be awake for a few more hours yeah uh i mean up to you so it's what you want to do oh what do y'all want to do um you might wouldn't mind selling and shopping and trading but in real life it's also our quitting time yeah. yeah, it sounds about right for um, to shop and stuff. But All right, do a little so, shopping episode next uh, next session. I am going to say this: we'll do the shopping part. But when you, as you finish shopping, just to kind of put a little like suspense, you hear suddenly hear a clanging bell sounding from the main entrance. Instance, the deep. The deep gnomes around you all draw weapons and retreat as you see a guard stumble back and then rise up in the air. A strange shimmer around him reveals the surface of the gelatinous cube that has engulfed him. And that's where we'll end the show. Wait, who got engulfed? A deep known guard. Oh no. Uh, it might sound stupid, but he wasn't like that for like the the jet the the cube just plopped on him, right? Yeah. A strange cool. shimmer around him so deep known around the deep knowns around you all draw weapons and retreat as you see a guard stumble back. So the guard stumbled back and then he rose up into the air. Oh okay. I keep on missing things. All right, and I'm going to stop the stream. Good night, everybody.